Yo, what's going on, Epic 7? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 116. Floor 116 will have you facing off against Elena. Her and her allies inflict debuffs that you can't dispel by normal means throughout the fight. The more debuffs that you have on your units, the more damage Elena and her allies will deal to you. In order to dispel the debuffs, you're going to need to attack this green crystal that is there during the fight. It will have a symbol next to its life bar indicating which debuff it dispels from all allies whenever you attack it. Each time you attack this crystal or use a non-attack skill, the debuff the crystal dispels will change, so you will want characters that can either incidentally attack the crystal plus another character at the same time, or just use a lot of non-attack skills on your team. If you use AoE attacks against Elena here, she will activate Consecrated Ground, which is going to end up giving a barrier to all allies as well as a combat radius push to everyone on her team. And that barrier also gives a damage buff to everyone on her team. Basically, don't use AoE attacks on this floor if you can help it. At 40% or less health here, she will transform all of her adds into either Cerise or Ray. Cerise simply just does extra damage to your team, while Ray will give Elena immunity along with a ton of other buffs to up her damage and survivability. It's going to make it really hard for you to burst her down. Simply put, bring some kind of character that can remove buffs from Elena, namely immunity, so that way you can burst her down and finish her off when she gets low on life. The first floor is going to be against this sharp Tarask, and I'll be honest with you, he's kind of a joke. He does really big damage and he can kill characters very quickly with his ultimate, but he's made a paper so you can honestly just like kill him in two attack cycles. Again, who really cares? As long as you have decent damage on the first floor, you can kind of just run him over. Super simple. Anyways, let's talk about who we're playing and why. First up, for our tank, I'm playing Brig. You can absolutely play Adventurer Raz for this, but he's a red unit attacking into a bunch of blue units, so you have a 50-50 chance to actually hit your actual defense break on Command Strike, as well as your strip in the final phase versus Ray. So I just didn't see a reason to not choose Brig because, well, he's got barriers for his team. His basic attack skill here, Shadow Swordsmanship, can attack the green gem, and also proc Limitless Sword Arts, which could then go into Elena to strip all of her buffs, give defense breaks, slows, things like that. He just seems like a very good overall pick. And honestly, hearing him is a bit easier than Adventurer Raz. So for the artifact, I'm on Arius. Necklace here is health percentage. Ring is health percentage. And boots are speed. You only need 35% effectiveness. If you're on Adventurer Raz, you need 85% effectiveness. As for our healer here, it's going to be Tamarin. You could absolutely play Angelic Montmorency if you would so choose, because while well, Tamarin has an AoE attack in her kit, which triggers Consecrated Ground, and that could potentially make things kind of hairy based on where things are in the actual like turn rotation. So you have to kind of pick and choose your battles with Tamarin and her idle mode. That said, the guaranteed dual attack with uh, Lorena is just too good to pass up. So that's why I'm deciding to stick with Tamarin. She's just been... Pretty much the best Soul Weaver that we've been using for this entire series overall. Sometimes we use somebody different, but overall, she's still just the best Soul Weaver, I think, in most scenarios. So, Wondrous Potion Vial is the artifact, Health Percentage Necklace and Ring, and Boots, of course, are going to be Speed. And, of course, for our primary damage dealers here, it's going to be the Connection Duo of Camilla, as well as Commander Lorena. Unlike other floors, you could choose somebody different than Commander Lorena, but she does... Way more single target damage than any other character in Epic 7 for this floor, right? Normally she's competing with Sarmia, but Sarmia is a red unit fighting blue units, so Lorena, again, is just the no-brainer here. Let's talk about how we have the characters built. It's pretty much the same as all the other videos that you've seen with these two characters in it. Daydream Joker on the artifact, boots are speed, effectiveness at 85% plus, and whatever you want in terms of necklace and ring, I'm playing health percentage and effectiveness respectively. You can play critical hit damage or health, uh, crit chance. You can play attack percentage on the ring. All of those things are going to work out fine for you. And for Lorena's gear, it's still exactly the same. Level 60, 6-star Awoken, plus 15 here on the skills. Have the entire skill tree maxed out for the specialty change. And then we have Daydream Joker as the artifact. Critical hit damage is the necklace, attack percentage on the ring, and attack percentage on the boots. All right, cool. Now that we understand the mechanics, let's get to it. All right, check out how easy floor one is. Barrier up. S3 here for the defense break. Hopefully, the boss doesn't proc a CR push. 
Sadly, it did. All right, so we can go kill two here. We don't want to proc that CR push again. Attack up here. Pull Lorena. Basic attack on Lorena. Already 55% dead. Attack here with Brig. Lorena. Pull here with Camilla. And then basic attack with Camilla. Told you. Super easy, super free. So now we're on to RNG Hell, Elena's floor here, right? So the difficulty of this fight is this green gem here, like we talked about. If you attack the green gem, it dispels whatever is in this red box. So in this case, it'll dispel blind from everyone on your team. And whenever you attack it or use a non-attack skill, it shuffles to a random one. And yes, it can be the same one, which it's going to happen probably throughout the fight. You'll see it where I need a specific thing. And it'll keep going to something I don't need. That's pretty much the only real difficulty with this actual floor. So with Brig here, I'm just going to attack Elena. And then you're going to get a Limitless Sword Arts. It will always go into number three, apparently, on this floor. And if you are low on health versus uh, Elena when you're under 40% phase, when there's Ray and Cerise, it will always go into, it seems, either the Green Gem or Elena. More often than not, Elena, it really depends on the buffs that she has and things like that. Alright. Just fish for a dual attack on that. Alright. Same thing. I'm just going to fish here for one. If you get a kill on it, it basically just ends up being uh, a stun. It buys you some time. But considering how low the damage is on one of these other two characters, I figured it was worth going for it. Alright, so let's go barrier up. Nope, not what we're looking for. Let's hit this and see if it rotates again. Nope, still speed down. Alright, so let's attack up here with Camilla. Now blind. So we'll soul burn here. And go S3. All right, heal up here. All right, it's attacked down here. Oh, nice. But everything's attacked down here. All right, so we can attack here with Bree. All right, so let's go idle mode here. And unfortunately, this will eventually proc her S2, which does suck, but hopefully we can get some offense started in the meantime. Alright, so let's soul burn here on Camilla. Basic here. Are you finished fighting yet? I'm actually going to save this for when she consecrated ground, so let's just go basic attack here. I will and then here again. And then she's going to get a barrier here. And then she does it again. Okay, we have defense break here. How fortuitous. We could just cleanse it because it's good RNG. Alright, let's go skill three here. Alright, now if I go basic attack skill... She is going to push to the front and probably kill me here. I think we have to go for it. So let's just soul burn here. All right, this is going to blind everybody and do splash damage. Hopefully it doesn't kill Lorena. Almost kills Lorena. I need to rotate these ASAP to try to find blind. There's blind. I need that so bad. Oh, man, but I'm also very low. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to soul burn in order to heal up and get rid of blind. Okay, there is attack down here. And now here is 
the uh, immunity on Elena. We need to get rid of that ASAP. Oh, we're defense broken. All right. Again, lucky RNG. Get rid of that. All right, so we go barrier up. We'll attack here. Hopefully this is a strip. Got it. Then we go attack up here. Basic in here. Kill three. Almost there with Lorena. One more attack and then we got it. Ooh. Taking a beating here. Find Soulburn here. This might actually pick it up. And there we go. That is Abyss Floor 116 in a nutshell. As you noticed throughout the run, I got a little bit lucky with the Crystal RNG. Your runs may be different. Your mileage may vary. Again, this is one that has a little bit of RNG involved in it. You just have to make sure that whatever the Crystal shows you is what debuffs you have. Again, if... Uh, you don't have the right combination of crystal dispels versus your debuffs. You're just going to have to keep trying until you get lucky uh, and find a winning run. This is why I really like, again, Lorena on the floor. Because her massive damage kind of uh, gives you huge damage swings, huge damage windows that you otherwise wouldn't have with the uh, regular DPS or other DPS, right? And that kind of increases the amount of RNG you have to go through throughout the fight. If you have any more questions, as always, let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in Abyss Floor 117. Later now.